Hello everyone, it is Teresa from Teresa Silhouette Spot for All Things Art, where I love sharing art from my heart. How is everyone tonight? It is Tuesday. Tuesday, what? October 6th? I think so. Tuesday, October 6th. I'm painting these stacked pumpkins or any small man, but I'm painting pumpkins. Anyway, how is everyone tonight? When you come on, say hey. I'm using my overhead, um, so I won't be able to see the comments, but I will try. So let me see. Um, oh, I guess I should do this with my camera that I have sticking up in the air, right? Open it up. Flip it down. How's that? That's good, right? Yep. Then we're going to move it a little closer. I didn't want to get on here too late, but I guess I should have gotten better set up before I did. Let me check it now. Better. Okay. So, how is everyone? I'm set up now. I'm not all discombobulated. And I'm going to get ready to paint. So, um, come on. Say hi. And we can chit-chat. I will try and look back. I should have gotten my iPad. I will try and look back at the comments. But you know, um, I always come back and answer your questions. I always come back and look at your questions. So if you have a comment, um, just put it in the comments and I will come back later after. I'm texting daughter number one. She had a concern. I'm making her a bunch of shirts um, with my cutter. And so she wants to know if I have certain colors or whatever. She's sending me shirts. Okay, so I'm going to get my phone set up. There we go. Put this on time lapse. There we go. Um, put it in its holder. Turn it around. And we're ready. Okay, sorry. So um, I'm going to get out my paints. I'm going to do three different colored pumpkins, but I'm going to start on the bottom with the orange traditional colored pumpkin. And I think I'm going to do like a, uh, maybe like a beige one. Tan, like a natural, neutral colored one. Um, and then teal, because the teal pumpkins seem to be uh, very popular this year. So, I'm getting out two different oranges and this um, yellow okra. And like you guys all know, I mostly use um, folk art multi-surface paints. And they're multi-surface, you know, because they have that little um, decal on the top with the icons for glass, wood, plastic, Multi-surface, even clothing. Um, I love these paints. This is the paints I use mostly, but I do use um, deco art. Not so much um, deco art Americana I use. And there's one other stuff I use, but whatever. Anyway, so I'm going to turn you guys around. Let me just check if there's anybody commenting yet. I don't see. So. I'm going to get started painting. I'm going to flip you. I think that's a good angle, right? Let's move my paint that's all piled up here. I will be needing all these colors, like I said, because I'm going to be doing um, the traditional one, traditional oranges on the bottom. Um, more of a uh, beige, neutral, white one in the middle. And then... A teal one. I have this teal out, but I don't think I'm going to use this as dark as it is. I'm going to lighten it up with some white. So I've got my paints out. I need a decent sized flat brush to get started. I think we'll use this one. This is a what, number 16. Yes, number 16. I'm double loading. So I am picking up one orange. And my yellow okra 
I'm loading it into my brush. Getting the bristles really nicely filled up with paint. My little runway here. You want to have the paint that's with a double load. Half one color, half the other color. And you want to have it about three quarters of the brush. This one's a little shy, but that side's good. And I am going to get started. And when you do um, pumpkins, first of all, these boards really suck up the paint. So I have to go a little heavy on the paint, but I love these boards. They come from uh, Diverse Woodworking. They have an awesome selection of cutouts. But anyway, when you do pumpkins, it's a series of C strokes and then backwards C strokes. So I'm constantly picking up more paint. I just picked up the lighter orange. I'm not sure if I like that or not, but we'll blend it in and I think it'll be okay. So I'm picking up one of two oranges and the gold and I'm working my way towards the center of this pumpkin. Making sure I always have a nice amount of paint in my brush and I pick up paint with every stroke. Now I'm going to go to this side and what I'm going to do is I'm flipping over my brush because I want the orange to start on the outside like it did on the left. We want to keep the orange to the outside when we start this other side as well. Two of my very favorite things to paint, and they both happen to be foalish, are pumpkins and sunflowers. I may go back and give this all a second coat. We'll see. Once I finish the highlighting and whatnot, we'll see if I want to do that. Oops. I had my orange to the wrong side. That's okay. I just flipped it around and kept going. If it was something that I was a little bit more concerned with, the colors blending, I would wipe my brush um, and start the stroke over. But I have so many colors going on here that I don't mind that I almost started my stroke wrong and then in the middle i'm going to do like eventually these colors have to meet up so i'm going to start and then i'm going to add just pure orange to the middle but I'm still following the curve of the pumpkin. What do you guys think? And I think I am going to go back. I need a little bit more um, yellow ochre. And I think I am going to go back and do another coat. Sometimes when I'm painting on these MDF boards, I base coat them with white first. But I didn't do that tonight. Had a little bit of a crazy day today. So I just wanted to get on here and paint. And see my Facebook friends and supporters. See how y'all are doing out there. So, you saw me. I was texting and still getting my camera on the right angle in order to paint for you guys.
and I'm constantly going in. Oh, it did it again. This time I'm going to fix it. Took the paint off, pick it up, and start over putting the orange to the outside. I have to pay attention. Um, I'm constantly picking up the yellow ochre on one side and the orange color on the other side. And in this case, I'm using a mixture of, um, I really like this orange, this Deco Art Spiced Pumpkin color. So I'm using a mixture of the Deco Art Spiced Pumpkin, the yellow okra, and then pumpkin in the plaid acrylic paint. I forgot I just tipped over there, so let's go back. I might need a little bit more gold again. I'm not worrying about this part here, as you're going to see when we stack the pumpkins. Um, one is going to rest on the other. They're going to overlap somewhat. I'm going to probably maybe add some leaves in between, or um, at least uh, some curly cues, as if the pumpkin is sitting on maybe um, hay or a floral arrangement in between. And it's always good when you're blending, and like I had to go over it, Two, you want to blend wet on wet. I may skip up to the peel pumpkin so I don't have to worry about um, this line right here for now. I think that's what I'm going to do. So what do you guys think? Let me turn you around. This is the bottom pumpkin so far. Three different colors, um, but when you see, when you start blending together, it's multi, multi, multi color. Oh, you guys, my hair, I took a shower and when my hair is very, um, not cooperative, but whatever. Anyway, so I'm rinsing out my brush. I'm getting dirty water everywhere. Let me see if we have any comments. Hi, Francis. Thank you so much. Nice to see you. I think that's it. And I'm going to go. So now, like I said, I'm using this teal. But this teal's a little dark. So I'm going to mix it with some white. I want to tone it down a little bit. Now I'm going to skip to the top pumpkin with the teal um, to let my orange dry when I want to put my, sorry, I'm going to bang, when I want to put my um, white and cream colored one, that's not going to work, in the middle. Although I don't know what's the difference because I'm just going to then be waiting for the teal one to dry. But I already put this paint out, so. I made it a little lighter. And I'm going to add some fresh white. So I'm going to double load my brush with the teal, the lighter teal, and white. Be around anyway so you see I made a puddle of teal I mixed white in some of it and then I have my fresh white here and I'm double loading my brush with my white and then the teal that I added the white to to soften it up a little bit there we go and then I'm just gonna do the same thing I did on the bottom I'm gonna start at the top I'm going to keep my blue to the outside, and I'm going to make a series of C-strokes. 
keeping my blue to one side and my white to the other. I don't know if you guys saw last week when I opened the sample pack from Diverse Woodworking. It was chock full of designs for um, fall and Halloween. There was a spider. There was a ghost. Um, there was the stack pumpkins. What else? There was a witch hat. There was another pumpkin with, I think, and I have to look on their website, I think the purpose of it is to have a cat under like the pumpkin lid that you would cut off. Um, so I'm going to be painting one of those every Tuesday and Thursday until I've painted all of them live for you guys. So I will be doing a series of these really cool fall wood cutouts. My paint parties that I host um, in person are on Mondays, so we won't have a conflict. I will come here. If you want to scroll back and look for the live where I um, unboxed the full sample pack from Diverse Woodworking, oh, loved it. There was a couple I didn't know what they were, so I had to ask my peeps, what do you think it is? Um, and go on the website really to figure out what they were. That's okay. So you see, I'm using the same, it's like a little backwards C, a backwards comma stroke. I'm just, I'm doing the same thing I did with the orange pumpkin on the bottom. Double loading my brush. Only this time I mixed a little bit of the teal paint with some white because the teal out of the bottle is much too dark. So I made a puddle of the lightened teal but sometimes when I go in to pick up the teal I'll pick up it straight with the blended part and pure white and the pure teal and that's what's giving me some really nice um, shades in this top pumpkin here when I get done I know it's gonna look unfinished when I get done I think I'm gonna put um, Something on the top, maybe some raffi, maybe a big um, bow, maybe probably a big bow, a big full bow, uh, maybe some black and orange. Let's see, I'll have to go through my ribbon and see what color I should make the bow. I can staple some twine or string to the back. So it can be hung on the wall or the front door. Okay. Now, I'll rinse my brush while I wait for both of the colors to dry. You know, my computer's kind of shadowing my design a little bit. Let me see if I can nudge you back a little bit. Okay. Um, while I wait for... Oh, my light fell. Sorry. While I wait for that to dry, I'm going to get out a little bit of burnt umber. I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Using the same brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt umber. I'm going to loosen it up a little bit with some water. And I'm going to go in. And I'm just going to lightly put in 
some ribs to the pumpkin. And see how I'm using my finger? Just to like fade it in a little bit. Do that same thing. So I use a little bit of water. And then I'm just taking my finger and gently rubbing. And add a little bit to the outside too. There we go. And then I'm going to do the same thing up top, but this time I'm going to use the teal. To add the, I guess, the segments, because pumpkins are squash, so I guess they'd be more like segments to the um, squash. Oh, I'm going to get a nice sharp edge on my brush. And again, I'm going to use my finger to rub it in because I don't want it really, really dark. I just kind of want it to be a little bit shaded in there. And you can't tell, but I'm lightly, lightly, lightly making these jokes. I just watered down the teal paint. And there you have it. See, what do we got here? Up oh, in here. Nope. Okay. Go back over here. Here we are. So now I think I'm gonna use a new plate because um I want my linen and my white to stay pure and fresh. So I don't want to get them mixed up. My plate is a mess. So I'm gonna start a new plate and put out some linen and some fresh white. I'm going to do the pumpkin in the middle because I think this is pretty much dry. You know what I'm going to do first? Uh, let me think. I guess I could do that. Um, yeah, I'm going to add some leaves to both of these. Let's see. What I mean. Maybe some leaves, maybe a little bit of grass. I'll put the I'll put the leaves up top, but I'll put the grass on the bottom. Okay. Double so loading my brush. With the two greens. If anything, you guys have seen me do leaves a million times. Okay? And I'm going to bring the leaves, so I'm going to pull them up this way as if they're underneath in between these two. So once I go back and paint my white over this one, you're not going to see them. We have to make sure this is very, very dry. But um, the point of the leaves is going to come out and up here because they're being covered by the middle pumpkin.
I might even add a couple of little flowers, we'll see. Um, but for now, I'm just going to add some of these one stroke leaves. And they can cross over each other. Some can be bigger, some can be smaller. And I'm pretty much going back and picking up paint with every stroke. Just put a little bit more paint. I make sure I have a nice chisel edge on my brush. But I just go back and pick up a little bit of paint on each of the corners every time, or just about every time, and make a new stroke. Can you guys hear my computer humming away? I don't know why that is. So then down here, I think the first I'm going to add, before I put in my pumpkin, I'm going to add some little grasses. And I keep turning my brush. So sometimes I'm leading with the light green. And sometimes I'm leading with the dark green. And I just flip it over. This way we get a nice mixture of grass color. We don't want it all the same. So I'm using two colors, but once you start blending them and layering them, it really starts to be a lot more than two colors. And we're going to crisscross. And just keep adding grasses in here. I might even go back um, after I do all the green. I might go back and pick up some gold or some um, browns and stick them in there just to add a little bit more. dimension to the grasses in here. And I don't know if you can see it, but every once in a while, I'll do like two or three strokes, and then I'll go and flip my brush. And so I'm starting with the other side, the other corner. And these are just little flicks. They're a little wider at the top, and then they get narrower like a blade of grass, and they're just tiny little flicks of the brush, not applying a lot of pressure. What do you guys think? We're really going to have to wait for this to dry. I might have to get out the hair dryer. I could do like all one direction, one direction, who knows that band, um, and then go back and do the other direction, but I like to alternate back and forth, back and forth, and flip my brush between colors. What I should have done to save time before I started this, I should have pounced a little bit of these colors in this very edge here and then I wouldn't have had any orange showing through. So I'll have to add quite a bit more um, leaves to 
cover up the orange or bring my white down a little further. We'll see. Whoop, to add the little white ones. And I keep going back, I pick up more paint, I fix the chisel edge of my brush, and I come in and I add more brass strokes. I have some gold on my other plate. Maybe I'll pick some up and add that in here too. Don't forget, if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Currently, I cannot see the comments, um, but I will go back when this is over um, and answer any questions or comments you guys have. Okay. I've got to start my time lapse, y'all. I always do that. I like to have time lapses. I like to be able to share them with people who just want to see the finished product and don't want to watch the entire live. And then I get started painting, well, mostly started talking, and I forget to start my time lapse. Now I'm going to just, I think I'm going to leave my brush dirty. I'm just going to wipe it off and I'm going to pick up some gold. And I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to add a few gold strokes. Yeah, I like that. Not too many. Just adding a little bit of highlights. It's not really gold. It's um, yellow ochre. But it looks like gold to me. And I'm just using it to highlight some of the grass here. There we go. I think I am going to add a couple, just a little couple of daisies up in here on my uh, teal pumpkin. I already have that my white. I picked up a little bit of the yellow okra. And I'm just going to go in here. And add a little, few little daisy strokes. For my flower. I'm doing this for two reasons. Well, I want to dress this up a little bit with a little um, couple flowers, but I'm also waiting for all my green to dry because when I do my middle pumpkin, I want it to be nice and pure um, white and linen. I 
messing up some green there. That's not good. What should I add? I might add this teal for centers. I like when the centers of my flowers really pop. There. What do you guys think? What do you guys think so far? Wait till I add the curly cues. I'm going to pull you up. Look. It's my crazy hair. What do you guys think? I'm loving these colors. I really am. It looks good. And when I add the middle pumpkin and we get it just the way we want it. Wait till you see it. Okay. No more um, messages, comments. So we're going to go back. I am going to get the hair dry out for one second. I wish I knew how to mute this. Do I never mute it? I don't think I do. Because I want my greens to be really, really dry. So, pay no attention to the hum of the noise. Give it a quick dry. good we shall see um well let me show you something i made so tonight i took an i took an art class with my library and look how cute this is so it's a board it's paint sticks two paint sticks and then one side is this really really cute snowman and the other side is this adorable scarecrow isn't that cute how fun is that? And these eyes, these little squinty eyes, I've never made eyes like that. I was like so excited to like learn that as if it's, you know, some awesome technique. Isn't that cute? I thought it was really cute. And I'll hang it up. I'll put a, some twine on the top so I can hang it up. Okay. Back to our stacked pumpkins. This middle one is going to be, um, I might add a little bit of umber to it, but so far it's going to be white and linen. And I'm going to double load my brush with the white and the linen. And I have really, really nice fresh white here. I use the other side of it for my flowers, but it's really nice. Fresh, clean, bright white. And I'm going to go in and I'm just going to start the same way I did the other two with these endless C strokes. And I see that I need a little bit of the burnt umber mixed with my um, linen. 
My linen wasn't giving me enough of a difference. So I added a little bit of um, more umber to it. Very, very corner. Add it in there. And now I have to be careful where I stop and end, or start and end, because I don't want to go too far into my bottom or my top pumpkin. And as you can see, I'm still just doing the C strokes with the double loaded brush with linen. Um, titanium white and a tiny tiny bit of burnt umber on the corner where I have the linen. And what I would probably do to shade the segments is add a little bit more burnt umber to those sections. If you see, I go over my stroke a few times. Um, because I didn't base coat this MDF board before I started painting. Oops, that's okay. Six of one, what did they say? Six of one, have a dozen of the other? If I base coated it, it would take me less time to paint, but I would have spent time base coating it anyway. So, really, that's the difference. I'm going to need two coats, like on the other two. Sometimes when you get in the middle, they almost, um, your strokes almost meet each other, depending on how wide you made them to begin with. And then I just like to fill in the middle. Okay. Now I'm going to go back to my second coat. Need some fresh white, and I always like to keep the white to the same direction. I have to get more white. A little shade here from my paint and it was confusing me that I had missed a spot. Oops. Might be 
too much. That's it. I want a slight overlap up here, but not too much. Same with the bottom. There we go. What do you guys think? Oh, there you go up in the corner. I think I like it. I think I do. I might add, and I'm going to go in, I'm going to mix a little bit. Um, of the linen. And the burnt umber, just to like give it a little bit of a shadow under here. I don't want it too dark. I want it to blend in. But just to give it a little bit of a shadow where they meet. I'll come around the edge like I did with the other two. And then I'll add my um, shadow for the ribs. Pick up a little water again in my um, umber. And lightly, ever lightly, add the shadow to my sections. There we go. Put that around the back. Maybe just a little bit up here too. Yeah. Now the last thing I'm going to do is get my um, liner brush. I'm going to go into my dark green. I'm going to get a nice point. I'm making my paint pretty thin with the water. An inky consistency. I want to get, I'm twirling it, twirling it, twirling it, because I want to get a nice point on the end of my liner brush. And I'm going to put down my pinky. 
and I'm going to add these curly cues. And after I add a few of these dark ones, I'll go in and add some light ones too. But right now, while I have the dark green, I'll just keep it going with the dark green. And then I'll go in and add the light green. You guys, these were the, one of the hardest things for me to learn how to do. Oh, I'm pretty much out of light green. I'm going to get a little more. Where's my light green? I don't know. It won't be mine. Who's this? Oh, it might have fell on the floor. That's okay. So again, I'm making my light green. A little inky with the water. Got a nice puddle going here. Mixing it. A little bit of white to that. I want to roll it out with a nice point. And then I'm going to go back like I just did. And add some of these curly cues. Same thing on the bottom. And then I think I'm going to add some up top too. But up top, um, on the white and the um, teal, I'm going to do white. So again, I'm mixing my white. I'm using the liner brush. I washed it out. I added some water to my white paint. Which, by the way, see this, you guys? This is a hot commodity. This is my last bottle of white paint. That's going to be a problem. Paint has become very hard to find. Thank goodness I am going to paint um, with Donna Dewberry in a couple of weeks. And I'll be able to bring home paint with me from her art studio. I'm taking a um, private lesson, and then I'm doing a group class the next day. So I'm getting to go and paint my little heart out with Donna Dewberry. You guys know how much I love her, the creator of the one-stroke decorative painting method. And I cannot wait. I think I'm going to call this done. I'm put my brushes down. Turn you guys around. Yeah. What do you guys think? I think I'm going to call this done. I love it. Ooh, this hair is bugging me tonight. I should have put some product in it after my shower, but I didn't. Anyway, um, thank you guys for joining me. I hope you like the stack pumpkin. It's cute. I think I'm going to um, put a bow up here and then add some twine to it so I can hang it. And that's it. And then maybe... In December, I'll paint you guys a snowman on the back. But for now, that's it for tonight. We're going to do all the diverse woodworking fall sample pack for most of the month of October. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm going to paint a new wood piece every Tuesday and Thursday. So join me here at Facebook Live about 7.30. I will try to put up a post to tell you what got time I'm coming live. What do you guys think? Okay? Anyway. I love you. Stay safe and sane. And thanks for watching.